My name is Stephen Johnson. I am the senior pastor for Bethel House of God Church, located in Hollandale, Florida. I want to thank you for tuning in to another segment of our, our Bible study. And I want to talk about a subject that uh, we've got many people who have emailed us and they wanted to know that as Sabbath commandment keepers, uh, we do observe all of God's feast days and holy days. They asked me about this eating clean. Can you explain this to me? Because my pastor has given me scriptures that says that it's okay to eat anything. So everybody always gives me the three scriptures that they use to uh, justify in eating anything. First of all, I want you to look at Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Read that in, it, in its entirety because it lets you know what God wanted his people to eat. We are a special people. We are a people whom God has set apart. The, there's a word I want you to look up and it's called sanctified. Sanctified means set apart. There's a difference when God sanctifies something. I have to always plug in that he created the heaven and earth in six days, the seventh day he rested, and he sanctified the seventh day to be his Sabbath. So not only did God sanctify a specific day out of the week to be his Sabbath, for us to come and worship and praise and to learn of him, but he also sanctified certain foods for us not to eat. You know, when you read the book of Genesis and you find that Noah uh, was putting animals into the ark, you read where he told Noah that I want you to get seven sets of clean animals and one set of unclean. Wow, you would have never known that God had even distinguished clean and unclean from the very beginning, but he did. Also, when you read uh, Leviticus 11 chapter, it tells us everything that we can eat and what we cannot eat. Unfortunately, we can't eat crabs. We can't eat oysters. We can't uh, eat the pig, uh, pork chops. We can't eat it because we are the people of God. And you'll find nowhere in the scriptures that those things were nailed to the cross. So be careful in what people are teaching you. Be careful of what you are being taught and how scriptures are being turned around. So let's go to the very first scripture that people tell me that their pastors give them. That's in uh, Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 11. And this is what it says. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. So the pastor says, ah, you can eat anything you want. It's not what goes in at what comes out. Well, this scripture is being taken out of context. You cannot take a scripture and apply it to things that, want, that we want us to feel good about or to justify the things that we want to do. But when you read that entire 15th chapter, going back up to verses 1 and 2 and 3, I want to just read this to you. This is what happened and this is what led into Jesus making that comment. Verse one says, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem saying, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So they came in and they just grabbed bread. They didn't wash their hands, they were hungry. They grabbed the bread and they ate it. And they were upset. They says, why are your disciples transgressing the law of the elders, the tradition of the elders? Why do they do this? And Jesus answered them by saying this. He says, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What were they doing? In verse four, he says, for God commanded you saying, honor thy father and thy mother. And he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, you change that. Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profit by me and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You see, 
Jesus was simply telling them, you're condemning the disciples for not washing their hands and violating your tradition. But what you have done, you have violated the commandment of God. You have taken what God says to honor mother and father, and you have watered that down. So what Jesus was simply telling them, he brought the multitude and he says, I want all of you all to come together. I want you to hear what I have to say. He says, hear and understand that even if you don't wash your hands and you pick up food because you're outside cleaning up the yard or you're out there working on the engine and your, your spouse brings you some food and you got dirt on it, sanitary wise, we want to wash our hands. But what he says, if you're just that hungry and you grab that sandwich and that potato chip and stick it in your mouth and eat it. Jesus says, it's not that which goeth into the mouth that defiles a man, it's what comes out. That had nothing, nothing to do with changing the Levitical law in Leviticus 11 chapter, nothing at all. So make sure that you are being taught to keep scriptures in the right context. Here's another one that people take out of context. Another one that people sent to me is in Acts the 10th chapter. When Peter uh, had a vision, he was on the rooftop, and uh, when he had a vision to go to the Gentiles, uh, Jews had nothing, no dealings at all with Gentiles, at all. They didn't deal with them. In fact, in the 10th chapter of Matthew, Jesus told his disciples, I don't even want you to go to the Gentiles. I only want you to go and deal with the lost tribes of the house of Israel. Have no dealings with the Samaritans or any of those people. Don't even deal with them. In fact, when the woman came to Jesus who was from Canaan, she wanted Jesus to heal her daughter. He says, I'm not going to heal your daughter. He says, I'm not going to take the children's bread and give to dogs. And you know the story. She says, that's true. But even the crumbs, even dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. And he went on ahead and healed that woman. That was a special case. But here in this scripture, because Peter was never taught to go to the Gentiles, God showed him a vision. He was on a rooftop, he was hungry, and a, 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 a sheet came down. It had all manner of beasts on it, all manner of four-footed beasts. And in that dream, it says, Peter, rise, kill and eat. When you look at Acts the 10th chapter, look at verse 13. It says, there came a voice to him, says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, no, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. This happened three times to Peter. Three times his vision came down. And he says, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to kill and eat anything that is going to go into my body and defile it. Because why did Peter say that? Because he knew Leviticus, the 11th chapter. He knew what to eat and what not to eat. He knew what had already been sanctified by the Lord. Well, when you read this entire story, when you get over into the 11th chapter, Peter is clear what those three sheets were. They were three men who came from Cornelius' house. Cornelius was a Gentile. Yeah, some people say he was a Jew. No, Cornelius was a Gentile. And he sent three men to go call for Peter according to his dream. And when he got that dream, as Peter was coming out of his trance, a few days, Cornelius had sent men to travel. And over that course of time, they came to the Tanner's house. They knocked on the door and Peter uh, heard his name being called out. When he got to that name, he heard his name being called. He went down and he saw these three men. I, I don't think that the interpretation of the dream came to Peter as of yet, but in the 11th chapter of that same scripture, it comes to Peter. And I just want to read that. In the second verse, when Peter was come to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. And the reason why they contended with him was because they wanted to know, we heard, Peter, that you went over into the Gentile's house named 
Cornelius and you taught the people there. And he did. He taught them Christ and they received Christ. They received Yahshua the Messiah and the Holy Ghost fell on them like it fell on the disciples in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. So Peter realized I better rehearse what I need to say because I'm going to be questioned as to why. I'm going to be questioned as to why I went and dealt with these Gentiles. And this is what Peter said. I went into the men uncircumcised and I did eat with them. And that's in Acts 11, chapter verse 3. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying and a, and a, a trance came and I was in a vision. Uh, and a certain vessel came down and it had all manner of four footed beasts on it. When you look at verse six, he says, when I saw this, I said, I can't eat it. But upon the which when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw four footed beasts on the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, fowls in the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, arise, Peter, slay and eat. People stop there and they don't read the story. They don't put the entire text together. Don't allow that to happen to you. When you continue to read Acts the 11th chapter, uh, starting with verse 10, Peter interprets his dream. And this was done three times, he says, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me to go down to them, nothing doubted. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me who are standing here with me. They're my witness, and we went into this house. And when we got there, I realized that those three men were the three sheets that came down that God wanted me to go with them and when I went there to these Gentiles, God told me don't call any man unclean. And what we were taught, God showed me that the Holy Spirit can fall on the Gentiles as it did us. So you see, brothers and sisters, don't allow somebody to take that dream and misinterpret it and tell you that you can eat anything. God would never change his law, what he has established for his people. Peter knew that. But unfortunately, some pastors don't read the entire text. They stop where they want to. The final scripture that a lot of people take out of text is 1 Timothy 4 and 4. This is what 1 Timothy 4 and 4 says. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, if it be received with thanksgiving. So all you got to do is, and a lot of pastors say, you see, the apostle says, all you got to do is pray on it and it will be received with thanksgiving. People, all you have to do is go up and start reading from verses one through four and include verse five. And a lot of people don't read verse five. It says, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. It is sanctified. Remember that word I told you at the very beginning of this topic? Sanctified means to be set apart. Where is food set apart by the word of God? Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Read the entire verse. I want to look at verse 1 of Timothy so you can get the entire story. Chapter 4, verse 1. Now, when the Spirit expe speaketh expressly that in the latter times some should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So you see, the issue is, that what the apostle was trying to say, there are some people that don't want to marry anymore 
and some people that says, don't eat meat anymore, that you can't do this. Well, there was some confusion going on. And what the apostle had to do was to come in and set everything in order. So if you don't understand that, because maybe your pastor doesn't read the first three verses, they only go to the fourth verse, which says, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be re refused if it be received with thanksgiving. There was a lot of other things going on there too. There was practices and philosophies that saying that uh, don't eat this, don't eat, th we're only going to eat the herbs, we're only going to eat that, uh, we're not going to eat sacrifices up to idols. But the apostle came in and cleaned it up by letting people know, hey, don't get involved with that because every creature of God is good if it be received with thanksgiving. But in my Bible, it's got two little semicolons there, which means that the scripture is not finished. And most people don't read verse five, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Leviticus 11 chapter tells us what has been sanctified by God. I tell you this, we still must eat clean. We are God's people. We are a peculiar people. It's ironic when you go to the doctor, high blood pressure, heart disease, the first thing they tell you is to stop eating pork, no more shellfish, no more seafood, because those things have an impact. But if we would only follow God's word from the very beginning, he knows what's good for us as his people. This is Stephen Johnson, Senior Pastor of Bethel House of God. God bless you.